people get upset because you're 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 setting the market a price obviously right i mean this is gonna you know get people upset sometimes no are you <laughs> kidding me so t you're best known of course for this this massive facility you're building mm -hmm. um why does in, in a market where sort of right now the market is sort of glutted why does that make sense as a, as a strategy well the glutted is the commoditization that happens again you go back to americana this always happens in capitalism. It's a great idea, everybody's making money, let's all get into it. And then guess what happens? There's a crushing. That's what's happening right now as we're going through the crushing. Um, and the strongest do survive. Again, it's, it's very Darwinistic. And um, this was expected. We actually expected it to happen sooner. I'm glad that we got as much time as we did. Um, but, um, We've been preparing for this, and at the end of the day, I don't think that the prices where they are today is sustainable. It's this is this is the point where it's going to wash away um, and leave just the strongest, and then you're going to see prices recover a bit. Same guys circling cartel grows right next to them, complaining are the same guys that are the big black biggest black marketeers. And if I'm stitching on a cop, I'm stitching on a cop. But when somebody's cheating. If somebody's using PEDs, it's our job to call it out. And if you're going to try to have your black market game fund your entire legal market game and then be the face of compliance, Allegedly, this legal publicly traded company is the largest illicit flower market supplier in the history of the United States. And remember how that saying goes? People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. It's something along those lines, right? Here on the cover of MJ Magazine is what California considers as the face of compliance, or at least what the brand that we're gonna be covering or the company that we're gonna be covering today considers themselves as, or how they like to be perceived as to a certain degree. However, it could be possible that Cali's model for compliance isn't exactly playing by the same rules as the other legal state operators or more so they might have just joined the party that's everyone else is at. And so there have been theories of government favoritism with multiple political meetings between certain business entities and politicians to turn a blind eye to their highly non-compliant operations. But across America, we have been experiencing an economic era of big business with Wall Street backing, crushing small business into oblivion. With greater market share and efficient operations, we consistently see the formation of gatekeepers that either stomp out their competition by undercutting prices or outright buy out their competitors to engulf it into their own business infrastructure or to just shut it down altogether. Which, hey, that's the nature of competition and the market. But what happens when big business also decides to operate non-compliant? to the laws and regulations in which small businesses utilize or traditional market folks have utilized to stay alive and compete. And this brings us to the alleged situation we might have with California's largest legal flower operator, Glasshouse, as well as a number of other massive legal companies throughout California. But in this video, we're gonna talk mainly about Glasshouse for the most part here because, well, there's some recent things that have come to light that we're gonna be talking about. Also, I notice my videos that focus on a single entity do better than the others. So make sure to like and subscribe, follow me on all social medias and like, let me know down below in the comment in, in, in either the comments down below or, you know, in the discord or on Twitter, which content do you like better? Do you like kind of more of the, the trap videos, the city videos, or do you like, you know, me focusing on brands or let me know your feedback goes a long way and it helps improve the content. And like I said, follow me on all social medias, links down below in the description. This is LMC, bringing you the early developments of this fascinating story that could reshape the future of the United States flower industry as we know it. Anyways, let's run it. Perhaps we are in an era where nowadays, in order to survive at all in the legal flower industry, tapping into the illicit market is a risk that's part of the cost of doing business. But like I said, the risk of operating outside of California's state laws and regulations could be mitigated depending on how these conversations went between potentially, allegedly, Glasshouse and the politicians they've met with, or maybe there's nothing. 
Anyway, in Cali, you're lucky to operate at even just 10% gross margins in their legal flower market. It could vary, but meanwhile, Glasshouse is reporting 43% gross margins, while another competing operation is reporting numbers like negative 32% this qu last quarter. Because Glasshouse is a publicly traded company, we should assume these numbers they report are accurate, right? Well, let's rewind to the beginning to break down the allegations on how their legal operations might be dipping into the illicit market to fund their business. And this is all alleged and cannot be proven, but I think that this is a really important thought exercise at the very least to kind of talk about the broader issues that are at hand here. See, Glasshouse has been making headlines in California the past couple of years in its path to becoming the largest legal flower greenhouse cultivation company in the United States. Two years ago, when Glasshouse announced they were opening the biggest greenhouse cultivation facility in America, how big? Well, try 1 million square feet um, with plans to expand this year. And I actually believe the first one was actually 5.5 million square feet. But I think that they just cultivate for, you know, that. But this has left many industry players extremely frustrated. Why? Well, basic law of supply and demand. The more plants produced in the market, well, the greater the supply, bringing down the price in the overall market, which directly affects all business owners in the industry. But specifically for small wholesale business owners, they typically can't compete in this scenario, crushing their profit margins down to or even below their bottom line. Because you guys are producing so much. So much. I mean, yeah. are you guys, if I'm not mistaken, producing the most out of California? Absolutely. I yeah, no that. question. I mean, you know, in the last quarter we grew and importantly sold, which tells peop you people like it, almost 75,000 pounds. So we're growing quite a bit. Oh, thank and you. That was, yeah. that was quarter, not year. Yeah. Yeah. In, thank in three you months. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Three I, I months, 75,000 pounds. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and increasing. And the amazing thing is we're selling it faster than we can grow it. People get upset because you're, you're, you're setting the market a price, obviously, right? I mean, this is going to, you know, get people upset sometimes. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, everybody <laughs> loves us. Are you kidding me? This is Glasshouse CEO, Kyle Kazan. See, Kyle joined the company about four or five years ago and was made CEO during a time when many other Cali companies had already transitioned into MSOs, multi-state operators. So for Kyle and the Glasshouse team, in comparison to the MSOs or multi-state operators, they got a late start and were behind in the race to the top which has led Kyle and his co-founder or COO, Graham Farrar, to focus on dominating the California market before, in the future, expanding into other markets. In other words, Kyle and Graham look to build a global company built on the foundation of dominating one of, if not the biggest markets in the world, in that of California. Now, to put into perspective how fast Glasshouse is producing and expanding, they sold more in its third quarter than it did the entire previous year. And that's just on the wholesale side. Now, Glasshouse operates in three sectors of the market, including wholesale, retail, and consumer packaged goods, leaving out only distribution. But we'll get into that part later if you kind of see where this is all going. So the retail side of the business has nine dispo so far with a store in Turlock, California on its way. And when it comes to branding, they have developed an in-house collective, including Glasshouse Farms, Allswell, Field, Forbidden Flowers, and Plus, all operating under the Glasshouse family umbrella. But by the end of 2023, if all goes according to plan, they will complete the retrofitting of their second 1 million square foot greenhouse, nearly doubling their total capacity and likely their production and output as well. But that leaves the question, where is all of this flour going? Now, of course, the plant is legal in California, but not federally across the US. That leaves legal operators at the mercy of the state and their laws and regulations and able to ship their product across borders. Instead, you must become what I mentioned before, a multi-state op multi operator, which is virtually replicating your brand in another state but restructured within a new set of state restrictions. But even then, if you overproduce product in one state, you still wouldn't be able to ship it into the other. And that leaves you with the option of selling it in the legal market for dirt cheap prices. Or if you know what the Trap Tree series is all about, then you know the second option. Yo, yo, 
This is super important. It's gonna be red hot and probably too much truth. And normally, I wouldn't give the cops in the state so much help, but this one needs to be resolved. Everybody knows it, I'm about to say it. Who's the biggest black marketeer, allegedly, in the history of the United States? Glass House Brands. They are the problem. Now, let me explain why. And this has nothing to do with anybody personally. It's us telling truth so we can clean up the legal market. First of all, what really set me off was the post by Jungle Boys and a uh, uh, blacklist where the cops roll up on some small farmer waiting for an DCC approval and shoot him up. Let me help you out, law enforcement. You're looking in the wrong place. Even the one acre brothers and sisters that have stayed on the black market because that's how they make their living and it's too hard in the legal market, they're not the right place to go either. And we got mad love for those homies. Yeah, I think. How do we know that Glasshouse is the biggest black marketeer, allegedly, in American history? And I would challenge either Kyle or Graham to tell me I'm wrong on this map. $1.3 billion in total sales, fourth quarter, all revenue for the state, right? That's all revenue for the state. That means about 650 million is flour. About 50% of sales, I think most people would say that's very close to what it is. So 650 million in flour sales total. According to their public reports, Glasshouse claims they produce 75,000 pounds. Now, they get real cute, so you don't know exactly how much dry flour, how much trim. I think they combine them on purpose because they know they want to like keep a little smoke going. But look, they sold 66,000. We're going to take a conservative number here, which is 50% of what they sold. 33,000 pounds of dry flour is what they sold in the fourth quarter. You ready? 33,000 pounds times 128 eggs times $25 out the doors, $105 million in legal sales if it was all legal. Now, you take 105 million, you divide it by the total flower sales, 650 million. By the way, I'm being real conservative. That means you'd have to believe the glass house accounts for 16.2% of sales. Now, of course, they're going to claim plausible deniability because that's super convenient for them. But guess what? They're a publicly traded Scott with the best quantitative minds on the planet. And hey, I'm just saying, somebody figured out that guess what? There's no way we're selling this all through legal channels. Here's my next question for Glasshouse. How the f do you have one distributor that touches every door in the state but feel the need to bulk, bulk it out to all the other distributors in the state? And look, I understand if people are back door a little bit to keep the lights on, to make their payroll, not to try to take over an entire industry because you've got a broken business model and you're cheating. And look, like I said, nothing super personal to Graham and Kyle, but guess what? When somebody's taking steroids like Sammy Sosa or riding their bike like the US Postal Service and they got Motoman coming behind them with blood doping, you call it out to keep the legal sport legal. Now. The part that nobody gets, they're looking everywhere. They're even looking at the burner show, bro. The guy who got his name on the burner distro is probably a tweet that hope to and put him off. The cartel is Glasshouse, allegedly. But I'd be happy to debate him on this map. So, on a good day, there's no way, but on a good day, we'll call Glasshouse 4% of sales which means 4% over 16%, only 25% of their product, allegedly, I'm happy for them to challenge this math, is going through legal channels. And they hide behind plausible deniability, I didn't know. Oh, and by the way, all the big politicals at the state because they think they're untouchable. Even worse, posing for magazines with your face on it, saying that you're the dude who's super compliant. Like, just stop, man. I can't watch anymore. Again, nothing personal, but y'all bullshit. So next time the cops want to go up to some small little farmer up the hill, dog, or try to go after a burner distribution, let me help you out. The biggest black marketeer in the entire American history, allegedly, only to be beat by a few people that live down in Mexico that were Mexican cartels, Glasshouse. If my numbers are correct, they're BMing approximately 100 thousand pounds now for context the person that you guys just saw in that video that is the ceo of catalyst it's a retail company in california based out of long beach and that is the ceo elliot lewis now remember everything he was talking about and what we're talking about here this is all alleged 
But basically, what is broken down here is that Glasshouse simply is producing entirely too much flour for the legal market numbers they are reporting in their quarterly reports. So let's be hypothetical and say that this was accurate. Well, then we could say hypothetically that Glasshouse could be selling that extra product directly on the streets of Cali. Or we could say hypothetically that Glasshouse could be using the small non-commercial airport located seven minutes away from their main wholesale operation in Santa Barbara to smuggle their excess product on private jets to places like, I don't know, maybe New York. Obviously, this is just hypothetically speaking. Um, in Brooklyn, noticing that our forbidden flowers, looked at it, I have no idea how it got here. It's legit, it's our stuff. Looked at plus gummies, it's legit. There's a bunch of other California products here, it looks good. Can't verify theirs because I don't know them as well as our own, but Last House Flower. So do we really think Glasshouse is out here in the streets trapping packs, chartering private planes to smuggle their branded products coast to coast? That's a pretty risky play, especially when it's compared to an alternative option of using ghost distributors or distros to do the dirty work for you, allegedly, and obviously hypothetically speaking. So don't understand what I'm doing here, right? We all know that it goes in the wholesale system. Then it goes through the burner distribution system and never comes out the retail. What we're doing is assuming it all comes out the retail, then we're comparing it to the retail numbers that we have from the state. It's going through the burner distribution system. Again, they would say it's legal, but they should know they're going to burner in 100,000 pounds of BM market, which means the cops smack cups on guys for one one million of the amount that today he is black marketeering. This is not a fair business model. Same guys circling cartel grows right next to him complaining are the same guys that are the big black, biggest black marketeers in this game. And if I'm snitching on a cop, I'm snitching on a cop. But when somebody's cheating and somebody's using PEDs, it's our job to call it out. And if you're gonna try to have your black market game fund your entire legal market game and then be the face of compliance, we're gonna call it. That's just facts. If you can't handle facts, if you wanna dispute the facts, I'm here to have a con con calm conversation. Otherwise, DCC police is sitting right in front of your eyes. Go walk on down to Glasshouse, former cop. That's who's got the black market now. And all the homies know on the black market, they're flipping Glasshouse pounds. This ain't no secret. I'm just saying it now. Stand it up for the industry, stand it up for the small farmer, and that's right. Now, you see, allegedly it's much easier to play with the politicians within your state to get the regulations or lack thereof needed to allow mass scale overproduction. And that's kind of a prior thing to the overall setup of legalization. But from there, excess product can be sold to ghost distributors that appear and disappear overnight that will move your product beyond state borders for you and the brand name intact to begin penetrating the other markets. And well, that can be kind of covered by the whole idea of plausible deniability. You know, them just saying, Glasshouse saying, well, we had no idea what they were gonna do with it. But companies like Glasshouse already have a statewide distributor. So it makes it really unusual that they would use a ton of other independent distributors and kind of chunk a lot of their product, you know, wholesale around. But by using these ghost distributors or distros, they would have the opportunity to dramatically discount their product for national distributors, which again, there are none in existence because it's federally illegal. And this completely bypasses the MSO requirements and restrictions and would be a guaranteed strategy that would position that operation as a future leader. And it would also sidestep a lot of the stuff that happens with MSOs where they have to create a whole vertical system when we when we talk about you know interstate commerce there won't be a need to have a full vertical in each state you can just do what Glasshouse is doing here you know allegedly and just ship it from California or a couple other states right and of course that's assuming you really have you know the political play on lock as the company proceeds in that direction which you know, it seems like they, they might be. 
Yo, 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 much needed follow up to the glass house video. A lot of chatter out of there. First, I want to make one super important point. Who do you think is going to get targeted for putting out this video? The company that runs totally clean, speaks truth to power, that's going to be Catalyst. Who do you think they're going to turn a blind eye, continue to turn a blind eye to? Glass house. That's just how it goes down. In fact, those guys are in Sacramento right now taking photographs with their political friends. And again, look, we're not trying to go after them personally, but here's the problem with our political system. The guys trying to solve the problem up in Sacramento literally yesterday, crickets, crickets, crickets on everything else, are the same ones that, based on my math, again, allegedly, appear to be the largest black market cultivator in American history, and they're chumming it up with everybody from Sacramento. Meanwhile, who's got the target on their back? The guy who plays totally clean, the company that plays totally clean and speaks truth to power. That's our political system today. If you speak up, we're gonna get you. If you're our friend and we like you and you do exactly what we say and you're found, we'll turn a blind eye. Hey, if you're somebody we don't know up in Trinity County, we're gonna come in because the war on drugs is still alive and well. If but then that leaves the question, when it's all said and done, who will be left standing? If the allegations are true, what happens when the laws and regulations change to block ghost distributors? Well, we soon might be reaching that point where those who are dominating the market now will dominate in the years to come after federal legalization or interstate commerce. But even before this happens, there are plays that these companies can do to transition even quicker into a fully legal operation. States that are willing to collaborate with interstate commerce operators that are able to collaborate with interstate commerce regulations could be the first steps to transitioning these alleged companies into fully compliant operators simply by providing them with an outlet for their excess product. And that's not to say any of these companies would stop illicit operations if they currently are. Truth is, there will always be illicit operations on some level in this industry. But really what it comes down to, in my opinion, is Glasshouse, if this is true, has been posing as this company, you know, that is compliant, you know, that has a lot of political ties, obviously, and has overproduced, you know, flour massively. I mean, it doesn't make any sense where all of this product is going. And it just comes off as very disingenuous to a certain degree because, well, you're coming off as, I mean, the, this, you know, Kyle Kazan is a, is a former you know, police officer, which I honestly, you know, I don't really care that much about, but it does come off as, you know, you're this person that's trying to be the face of compliance. You're complaining about the illicit market. You're complaining about, you know, some of the cartels potentially, right? And yet you are still, you know, you're breaking the law yourself. It's like I said, you shouldn't really throw stones in a, in a class house. But also, like I said, this is being done by everyone. This is being done by everyone from small to large companies and in terms of large companies like Glasshouse there are plenty of other companies that are doing this and they're doing a lot more quietly right but at the end of the day you know I think that the overproduction it is a cheat code like the CEO of Catalyst said Elliot Lewis right it is a cheat code and it also is going to destroy a lot of the smaller businesses right at the end of the day though this is a competition this is what it is and then really then when we also talk about the other aspect of their massive political ties, do we ever think that if, if this is truly happening, you know, if they are actually truly doing this, are they ever going to be actually investigated? Are they ever going to get any, you know, reprim you know be reprimanded or, or what? Or are they just going to be able to kind of skate by? Is I'm okay with people backdooring. I actually think it's, it's really the only way to survive for most companies. But at the same time, if you're going to purposely mass overproduce only to then, you know, break the rules and, and start shipping out, you know, to all these other states. It just seems like you're trying to accelerate the process of destroying, you know, the little guy and, and destroying the smaller business ecosystems that I, you know, care so much about. And like, you know, in that clip I, met, I, I, sh I showed earlier, Kyle talks about, you know, the time where everything gets crushed and everything is the crushing period. And the crushing period, well, he then, he then also says, you know, it washes away a lot of stuff. And, you know, he, he didn't necessarily, you know, he said he washed, it washes away a lot of, you know, companies and only the strong survive. But washing away that, those, those companies in a lot of ways, those are, the, those are the culture. That's washing away the culture. And I don't necessarily want to see that. 
Now, I'm not against people competing, and I'm all for competition. And I don't want to see, you know, favoritism or, you know, the government taking out competition, especially small businesses. But it doesn't look great because at the end of the day, if this is truly happening with Glasshouse and they truly have those ties with, you know, politicians and regulators in California, no one can really stop them. At the end of the day, do we need to really win the whole pie? Do we need to really be that greedy? Or in some cases, is Glasshouse almost stuck in their own design because they really were this company that tried to approach scale and they really had to scale up and they have to continue to scale up now because they need to speed this whole process up or, or you know, they're not going to be successful. They need to destroy as many companies as possible to survive, right? Or to make it so that they can really have a really good market share in California because like I said earlier, they were late to the party and they didn't get to expand or their whole strategy wasn't about you know, multi-state, you know, expansion. It was just, let's focus on California, which is one of the most competitive in the country. And let's try to really win that. And then we'll build from there in the future, which, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad idea at all, but I don't know. And also in regards to these ghost distributors, right? You definitely should check out where the, where the packs go in this video about NYC's trap shops which you can click on the top right corner. But what are your thoughts on the situation? Do you think the allegations are true? Perhaps they really are unaware, but what happens with their products and distributors? Or do you think it's more willful ignorance in that case or plausible deniability? Anyway, I would just love to hear your thoughts on this overall opinion in the comments. Do you think this is good for the industry? Do you think this is bad for it? Also, before we wrap this up, I want to say... We are in the process of expanding our team. We're looking for content creatives in all departments from video editors, thumbnail designers, script writers, social media managers, and more. If you're a fan of our videos and feel you have the skills to help grow LMC to the next level, then make sure to follow me on all the social medias that are down below in the description and also email me with the subject line LMC team. The links are in the description. Now, please include a short le uh, cover letter explaining why you would be a good fit and your resume of online portfolio with links to your previous work. I, would, I can't wait to hear from y'all. Definitely tap in with your boy if you're trying, to, you're trying to help build. I would love to help build you up. And like I said, contact me either via email or DM. Anyways, I really appreciate the hell out of y'all. I can't tell you guys that enough. At the end of the day, this is going to be a painful transition in legalization. Just make sure you position yourself in the right sectors, in the right areas, so that you have good long-term success. And anyways, this is LMC, signing out. So um, I would tell you, we have some legacy with us, but um, we are encouraging, you know, using our platform with the government to make it easier for people to get licensed. Just because you've been here doesn't mean that you can't, you, you, you don't have to deal with the market forces. Market forces change. Uh, and I know some legacy growers up in Humboldt, and I believe if they continue growing, you know, there's one in particular, a gentleman by the name of John, if he continues to grow these big purple Christmas trees up on his property that he's done for 25 years, you know, when he can sell anywhere, people will buy. I mean, I told him, I said, there'll be a time where people are gonna buy that once a year when you harvest this beautiful, these beautiful buds that you, you carry off. And I, I was able to smoke with him. I said, you're gonna be selling this for $100 an eighth because you don't have that much. And it's amazing what you have. And, and so to the extent that that's the direction he goes, because we talked about him doing some with me. And I said, I think you're gonna be bitter later. I would just stay independent, do what you do, because, you know, when the world opens up, you're California and you're in part of that legacy. And if you tell the story right, I mean, I, I, I can see you getting a huge premium for what you do. Hell, I'd pay a hundred dollars for an eighth of his at Christmas time and give it out to a few friends, because as long as I can tell the story or he tells it, um, you know, he ran from the police that raided it. He, I mean, his stories are, are the legacy stories.